We are standing outside the Vacheron stand at Watches and Wonders 2024. And today, we're going over every single new Vacheron release that you need to know about. And I'm saving my personal favorite, and these are banging, by the way, until the end. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And before we start this video, if you do enjoy these videos, please hit that subscribe button. We're going to be at Watches and Wonders 2024 the whole week uh, with some really incredible content. But let's talk about these watches, and let's do it from somewhere a little bit more quiet. The first release that definitely stood out from Vacheron and I managed to get hands-on with was the traditional Turbion chronograph and that comes in in full platinum it's a really really chunky model coming in at 42.5 millimeters in diameter and because of the the thickness because of the complications it is that little bit thicker it comes in at 11.7 millimeters in thickness which I know that I said is a little bit more of a chunky monkey and it kind of is comparatively to the manual wind models that Vacheron released and that kind of nicely brings me on to the next two releases which of course are that little bit thinner because they're manual wind. It is the Patrimony manual wind, one coming in in white gold and the other coming in pink gold. One of these models features a green alligator strap which is definitely the most sexy in my opinion in terms of understated kind of more vintage feel of watches and that's what they're going for here and the other has a kind of lighter blue alligator strap. These models come in at 7.72 millimeters in thickness so you see what I was saying earlier about the surprisingly thick uh, for the complications in that watch, this is why, because these are so thin and they're so elegant, so classic. They also extended the Patrimony collection uh, or models by one more line and it was a Patrimony moon phase. And this thing comes in a little bit chunkier, a little bit bigger at 42.5 millimeters in diameter, but obviously has those added complications. This is actually a fully automatic model, so it's not a self-winding model like the other two we just spoke about. And it comes in a little bit chunkier because it obviously is an automatic model with extra complications at 9.7 millimeters in thickness. There's a huge comparison between uh, luxury watches, the higher end, higher, more expensive watches, and thinness because they seem to be a lot better at handcrafting movements into a thin case. By general rule of thumb, the more expensive the watch, the more premium the watch, the thinner the handcrafted movement will be. And on that note, it's time for a quick wrist check. What is on your wrist today? Please let me know in the comments. Also, on that note, let me know where you want me to go next, what brand you want me to film next, because Vacheron was your guys' recommendation, and it was pretty awesome. At the moment, I've got the Grand Seiko, I can't even remember, the American exclusive, I think this one's called. Um, honestly, special occasions watch, special occasions model and this is pretty damn special. Next up we actually have, and I'm never going to be able to pronounce this because I am Scottish, but it's an Ejere moon face. And this thing is an 18 karat gold and it has this beautiful, beautiful blue, purpley looking dial. It really is stunning, but this is more on the ladies side of things. This comes in at 37 millimeters and of course has a moon face and a diamond encrusted kind of bezel, which obviously will raise the price quite substantially. By far the most exciting release to me and to pretty much everybody else out Watches and Wonders has to be the new Vacheron Constantin overseas coming in pink gold with that beautiful, unbelievable, and I can't describe this properly, it, it can't do it justice, but that green dial. So the first model we saw of these variants is the Overseas Chronograph, and this comes in at 42.5 millimeters. The green dial combined with the kind of gold indices and hands is just a wonderful play, and it honestly looks stunning. We didn't get the best light to film these, but even in bad light, they look great. The next model was the Dual Time, my personal favorite, because you have that red splash on some of the, the hands and that red arrow, which really pops out against that dark, dark green green and then you have the one that I think will be the most popular which is of course the three hand and this comes in at 41 millimeters and is very very uh, classic it's more timeless than I say the dual type would be it's more of the kind of safe option shall we say and then we have a ladies overseas self winding in 35 millimeters with a diamond bezel i know that if my girlfriend got hold of this i'd be dead so i won't say much more on that one the dual time actually comes in at 41 millimeters instead of let's call it the bigger brother the chronograph model which comes in at 42.5 and that's partially why i'm attracted to that dual time model it is a little bit smaller it is a little bit slimmer it is just a little bit more elegant to me 
personally, I feel like it's maybe not as flash uh, as the Chrono model. Now something that not a lot of people know and not a lot of people film or talk about on reviews is actually the oscillating weight or the rotor in the back of the watches. Now Vacheron rotors in the back of the watches on the overseas are actually in 22 karat gold and normally they have an open case back so you can see that beautiful handcrafted movement and rotor in the back and it just adds a little bit of weight and a little bit of finesse to the watch. They know that you're not going to look at that gold all day because it's on the back of the watch but they have it there anyway. It just screams quality. Now they did another sneaky release that again not a lot of people are talking about because the the gold model is kind of taking the the limelight if you will and it's actually a full titanium tourbillon uh, overseas and this comes in at 42.5 millimeters and see getting this in my hands unfortunately I couldn't film it when it was in my hands I was in a buying meeting but getting it in my hands the lightness of this model for a tourbillon model was wild. Also, for a Turbion model, it comes in at 10.39 millimeters in thickness. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Thank you guys so much for watching this little update video. We're going to be at Watches and Wonders all week. If you do enjoy these watches, please hit that subscribe button or follow us on Instagram at Chisholm Hunter Watches or me on Instagram at HB Life Lens. And I'm going to get a coffee. See you soon. <laughs>